Welcome to another PumaScan product demonstration. This is Principal Security Engineer, Eric Johnson. In this video, what I want to walk through is how to use the PumaScan Server Edition. So at this point, I'm assuming that you have already gone through the installation instructions, you've downloaded the installer from our pumascan.com website, and you've activated your license file. So at the end of that installation, you now have the PumaScan command line interface on your path. So as you can see on the screen, what I've got available here is PowerShell. You could also use cmd.exe if you want to. Either one will work. So if the installation has gone well, what you should see is the ability to run pumascan.exe. And what I would start with is just the help switch. So if you put dash dash help, you should see the Pumascan ASCII ARP, the version that you're currently running, along with a number of command line switches. So we'll kind of walk through these real quick. From the top, you'll notice that there is a dash dash project switch. Now this is required, and this is telling the PumaScan engine which solution or which individual CSProj file that you want to scan. So that's a full path to that project. The next switch is the dash dash format switch, which is just a comma delimited list of the various formats that you would like any security findings exported to. As of version 091, we support exporting the results to JSON, so you can potentially write additional scripts to query the results and potentially maybe upload those to some sort of vulnerability management system. We also support HTML, which gives you the more readable view of the results, as well as the ability to kind of save that HTML as a PDF file. You can also export the results to MS build formats, which is very useful when you get to integrating this with Jenkins because there is an MS build warnings parser available in that continuous integration system. And then VSO is the Visual Studio Online export format. This is very useful in older VSTS environments where you may want to add the Puma scan warnings back into the general build warnings results summary on the summary screen. So lots of options for the format. We've also got a dash dash output switch, which is required. And this is basically the full path to some directory with some sort of file name that you would like all of the export results to be saved to. So the example says my application dash Puma scan. I'll use a slightly different value here in a little bit so you can see what this does but basically it will create a file with that name in that location and then each format described above will be added into that directory with the specific file extension the dash dash settings switch is the full path to the settings file that configures how the scanner will run this could be the global settings.json file, which is installed into the app data Puma security Puma scan directory, or it could be the local.puma file that's stored within your source control repository. The verbose switch causes extra information to be written to the console, including some of the instance data. So that's really if you just want to see more information in the log file. The following threshold values, so there is high, medium, and low. In your Puma file, you have the ability to set a risk severity on every single rule ID. So for example, the SQL injection rule ID is likely going to be a high risk severity. The threshold values allow you to set a risk tolerance on the scanner, and if some number of high, medium, or low risks is identified that violates your risk thresholds, you've got the ability to cause the PumaScan command line interface to exit with an error code greater than zero, which in return will fail 
a number of the continuous integration systems and stop your build from proceeding any further. We're looking at the dash dash help screen right now and the dash dash version screen will just display what version number of the engine you're actually running. So that's a summary of the command line switches. Let's go ahead and run a sample scan here. So I'll clear the screen and we'll run pumascan.exe. The first switch, which our dash project switch or dash P is the abbreviation. And this wants the full path to the actual code that we're going to scan. So you can see on the file system here, I've got in the TFS user source repos directory, we've got a Puma Prey project that has been cloned into that repository. Also notice that we've got a .puma file, which is the scanner settings in that specific repository. So we're going to go ahead and scan this. So I'll grab this file path just to make it easy to paste it in here. And then we're going to scan in source the Puma scan solution file. So we'll scan all of the projects associated with this solution. Now for the format, what we'll do is we will say, let's use JSON and HTML as the two options. So two files will be emitted, one with a .json extension and one with a .html extension. Now where they go is what we tell this output switch that's next. So what I'll do is just paste that same directory back in there. So we'll put it straight back into the repository and we'll just put this in a file called pumascan. So that will create a pumascan.json and a pumascan.html file in that same directory. Next, we need to set the settings switch. And this is the path to that puma file that's also in that directory. So that will use the settings defined for this repository. I will go ahead and enable the verbose switch so you can see what that does. And then we can also set the threshold high value. And we'll just set that to an arbitrary value of five so you can see how that affects the outcome of the scan. So I'll go ahead and run this scan and you can see the ASCII art show up. And right now the scanner is opening that solution file. Notice it says we've got five projects identified, 118 C sharp documents were located. Now that the solution has been loaded, it goes ahead and runs the Puma security scan and a lot of information is output to the screen. So I'll go ahead and go back to the top so we can kind of take a peek at the results here. So you'll notice after the scan is completed, we can see in the scan summary section, it tells us which settings file was used, which engine version was used, along with the diagnostic information or the security findings that were located. So the first section tells us exactly which security rule IDs were identified, along with how many instances of those rules. And then there's a summary after that following, which says the number of highs, mediums, and low risk issues that were identified based on the categorization inside the Puma file. Now, because I enabled the verbose switch, you can see that we've actually got the JSON results that include the project, the file path, the vulnerable line of code, the risk rating. Those are all included in the output when you turn on the verbose switch. So we'll go ahead and kind of skip over that so you can read through that when you run your first scan. And we'll get to the output summary. Now you can see because we put JSON comma HTML for the output formats, we have two new files that were written out to that Puma Prey directory, pumascan.json and pumascan.html. The next section is the threshold validation. And because we set the threshold high switch to five, it's enforcing that requirement. So you can see we need to have less than five high-risk findings. Nine were identified in the scan, 
So you can see the exit code of six, which corresponds to a threshold of high violation, is the output of that scan. So that's all it takes to run PumaScan from the command line interface. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on a future installment where we explore integrating our server edition with some of the popular continuous integration servers.